In this video on C Sharp Basics, we'll be taking a look at logical operators. Now, logical operators allow us to check if multiple conditions are true. They're used in conjunction with relational operators. You want to use parentheses to group different conditions together. And finally, you can chain multiple conditions. When you use this in conjunction with the parentheses, you'll find that the logical operators provide a lot of power in determining which conditions allow you to do which code. First, let's take a look at the double ampersand operator. It's also known as the AND operator. Now the AND operator returns true if both the first and second condition are true. So for example, if five equals five and six does not equal seven, then return true. If five equals five and six equals seven, that would return false because six does not equal seven. Since both the first and second condition need to be true in order to return true, this second use case would return false since six does not equal seven. Next, there's the double pipe operator. Now the double pipe operator is also known as the OR operator. Now the OR operator returns true if either the first or second condition is true. So in this case, five equals five or six equals seven would return true since five does equal five. And if either one of these conditions is true, then the OR operator would return true. Then five equals six or six does not equal seven returns true. Since six does not equal seven, the second condition is true and thus the OR operator also returns a true result. Then lastly, it's checking if five equals six or six equals seven. And since of course both of those conditions are false, the OR operator returns false. Now you can also chain operators and this will come up with some fairly complex logic. Let's take a look at some examples of chaining operators. Let's say we have int x equals five. What would the value of result be? Well, actually the value of result would return some sort of exception error because I forgot to put a semicolon on it. But <laughs> looking beyond that, the first thing you're going to want to do is look at the parentheses. And right here at the very beginning, we have parentheses surrounding this x is less than six and x is greater than one. This means that the operations performed within the parentheses should be evaluated first. So x less than six and x greater than one would return true since five is in fact less than six and five is greater than one. But there are more operators to compare against. We have a couple of other or operators outside of those parentheses. First, we have x equals 20, which returns false. But since the OR operator is there between the X equals 20 and the previous set of conditions here, that means either one of these two sides of the OR operator can return true and the OR operator itself will return true. So we still have a state of true for this certain set of conditions. Now moving beyond this, we have once again another OR operator followed by X does not equal 13 and x is greater than or equal to zero. This is inside of their own set of parentheses. So this itself needs to be evaluated as its own expression. And we can see, of course, five does not equal 13 and five is also greater than zero. Since both of those conditions equal true, then this side of the OR operator would also return true. With the OR operators, since any one of these conditions can be true, will return a true result for result, then that is in fact going to come up as a true answer. For this next one, result two, I want you to take a few seconds to think about this one yourself and come up with your own answer. The answer is false. If you didn't get false as your answer, take another careful look at how this expression is set up. In the next video, we'll do a demonstration of these logical operators.